When God speaks, it happens. God's word is a power. It's not like God's word is not like our word. We say something, but then we have to do it. God's word is his active power. And when you hear God speaking to you in his word, when you study his word, when you hear his voice to you in his word, that is his power coming into your life. That is his reality coming into your life. If you want to make sure your prayer life is meaningful, you need to be deep into the Word of God. When you study the Word of God, God is speaking to you, and then you respond in prayer. Tim Keller's legacy is in that powerful combination of both pastoral sensibility and cultural awareness. With with Keller, you've got an example of what it means to be an exegete of the culture, not just the scriptures. And that exegesis of the culture is always to be in service to the exegesis of the scriptures, of, of making the application of Christian teaching more incisive, more compelling, more carefully tuned to the idols of our time. One thing that I'm grateful for in the ministry of Tim Keller, how the Lord has used him to not only help me understand the gospel well, but help me understand myself well, by helping me explore and discover idols that were, uh, were, were keeping me from, from delighting in Christ, from trusting in, in him. And for this, I will be eternally thankful. I still remember the first time I listened to a Tim Keller sermon. I was walking down a street in Edinburgh back in the days when we still used iPods. And as I listened to him talk about how grace changes everything, it was effective. It almost felt like a, like a weight lifting off my shoulders to hear the gospel described like that. Um, and it was life changing. Jonathan Edwards says, your good deeds cannot keep you out of hell. In other words, you can't save yourself. So he says, your good deeds cannot keep you out of hell. Okay, that's a true proposition. But then he says, any more than a spider web can stop a falling rock. And when he says that, he's connecting a propositional truth to an actual sensory experience you've had, which is spider webs are so absolutely frail and fragile and flimsy that they can't stop a thing. And it's his way of saying, your good deeds are like, they're like a spider web, they're like nothing. Uh, and what he did there was he, he connected a, an abstract proposition with a sensory experience and it, it grabs you. Tim Keller set out there as an aim for the teacher or preacher to cause your audience to adore Christ. That we would put Christ forward in such a way that would help people to see his beauty and his necessity and his significance in such a way that it would cause people to adore Christ. That's now always at the heart of what I do when I teach and I'm just grateful to have learned that from Tim Keller. It's been such a profound blessing in what he's written and also in what he's built really on the ground in the church and the way he's ministered in ordinary Sunday settings has helped thousands and thousands of pastors I know minister well in a post-Christian environment and we are so grateful to him for that. He is a really great guy. There are people who have a really big name and sell a lot of books and are well known and then to meet them personally is somewhat disappointing but Tim has always been very kind to me and I know not just to me but to a lot of uh, all sorts of people and people a generation younger than him like myself and people a generation below me. Uh, it's easy to look at non-Christians, and I think the, the climate of our world today would have us look at non-Christians with sort of sarcasm, with put-downs. I mean, look at these secular idiots. I can't believe what they believe. I mean, the thing I appreciate about Tim is that that's, that's never been his posture. He cares about them because he wants them to know Jesus. He's always been about Jesus. And so what I've seen from Tim is an ability to, to enter into their world, to see where they're coming from, to see their concerns and their questions, to, to meet them where they're at, so that he might better lead them to where Jesus is at. And that's what it should be all about. 
one time we were at a meeting together and he took the time to come over um, and made a beeline for me and came over and said, hey, Melissa, I just want to encourage you, keep writing. Well, Tim is so significant and so encouraging in a broader sense. He also took the time to encourage me personally. There is no pastor I know in the past 100 years who has done what Tim Keller has done. To take the Reformed faith and to take it to the street and to take it to the academy the way he has done is truly extraordinary. Tim also has the character of humility and kindness, which has uh, enabled him to influence hundreds of thousands of people. We are all indebted to Tim for the way that he has brought the pastoral heart of Jesus Christ and the truth of God's Word uh, to our culture and our day. The level of respect that he shows when he's trying to reach the unbelievers, uh, I think is something that is, is a model for many people and something that we should copy. Uh, especially in, in this time, in this generation, when we have so many people who have no credibility in the gospel or even in churches. I, I love the fact that Tim Keller's influence is born out of love for men and women, brothers and sisters in Christ in a local church, love for a city, a desire to reach a city like New York City with the gospel and then for the fruit of his life to then expand far beyond to cities around the world and brothers and sisters in all kinds of local churches. I thank God for his faithfulness to the word and to the church in ways that have served the broader church with the world, including my life, I think in ways far beyond what he could imagine.